is responsible for, the, for igniting the popularity of the extra gaming category. And as of today, it's sold o over 10 million games here in the United States. So next is a video which will give you an overview of our partnership with the President's Council um, and our efforts with the Let's Move organization. Uh, 
for that study, basically because our study was funded by our state insurance company. So they got a lot of negative press that a state insurance company was using a video game to fight obesity in kids in West Virginia. When the, when the findings of the study came out and actually proved that there were health improvements, uh, Good Morning America and several other people you know, were calling us and saying, you know, can you come in and do a, you know, can we do a story on, on this? And again, it was at the time where extra gaming was really starting to be introduced um, with kids. So of course, when we got that press, Clara um, had just joined Konami at that time, I'm pretty sure, and she called us up and said, how can we partner to get this to more kids in West Virginia? And so we developed a partnership where we have actually placed the um, console-based version of DDR into most of our public schools in West Virginia. Um, it's introduced through our PE classrooms with our physical education teachers. And then we really encourage them to use it throughout the school environment. So before school, in kids in West Virginia, um, I hate to say this, but are bust over an hour, uh, sometimes to and from school. And so a lot of times kids uh, you know, get to school early, they have 30 or 40 minutes before other kids come, so they have it set up in the morning in, in, you know, in an area where the kids can play, um, as well as they use it at school dances, they use it in just a variety of different ways. Um, then in the last two, th three years, we've actually um, done a statewide DDR tournament in West Virginia where, uh, again, using the console-based version, we're hoping that we can transition to the classroom-based version, um, but where kids from throughout the state compete against one another uh, at the school level, then we have regional tournaments, and then we've had statewide tournaments, and, and these are some of the pictures. Our first statewide tournament was actually on the grounds of our state capitol, which was kind of really neat to, to have those kids, you know, a lot of kids in West Virginia have never traveled outside of their county, let alone to the state capital in West Virginia, so it was really an empowering thing for those kids to come and, and participate in that statewide tournament. We also held a, a Childhood Obesity Summit last year um, in, in collaboration with our, with our tournament, uh, just to really bring, uh, you know, attention to the fact that you know these kids are dealing with these obes obesity issues, and we all really need to uh, break down silos to start fighting obesity within our state. And this just highlights some of the um, the media attention that we got uh, throughout you know our our journey from the clinical study through the through the tournaments. And Clara showed the video of the first lady talking about DDR. Um, as physical inactivity and obesity levels continue to rise in our young people, it has pr been proposed that a new generation active, that new generation active computer and video console games may offer the opportunity to co contribute to young people's energy expenditure during their free time. And I'm sure a lot of you have read that article in Pediatrics. And again, I am an advocate for physical activity. Um, I think that we should just drown kids in opportunities to be physically active. And it's something that we that we make a personal choice about. My personal choice for physical activity is running and walking. I'm not necessarily, I do video game, or active video games with my kids, my own children, and when we have kids over, you know, from the neighborhood and stuff, I do it as a fun outlet. I don't necessarily do it as part of my exercise routine. But I think that if there's kids that choose that as their exercise routine, we should foster that in children. And the research says just that, that you know, there are um, many outcomes that we're seeing from using active games in kids to improve the, the, the health of our children in West Virginia and throughout the nation. <laughs> okay, so at this time I'm going to hand the mic over to Adam Noah, who's going to talk to you a little bit more about energy expenditure with active games. Uh, so, uh, my name is Adam Noah, and uh, I'm here from the Adam Center at Long Island University in New York. And so, I, I should probably tell you a little bit about what I actually do with uh, Dance Dance Revolution. So, years and years and years ago, I'm actually from West Virginia, and I'm from Huntington, West Virginia, which 
I believe is the most overweight city in the United States, and potentially the world. Um, and so I started playing this game when I, I, I'm a large Japanophile, I guess, and I went to Japan many times, and I was introduced to this in the arcade in Japan. If you, and there many of you don't know, the arcades in Japan are like multi-floor things, and they have a whole floor that's dedicated to rhythm-type games. And it used to be that you could go to the arcade in Japan, and there would be a hundred of these machines all around, and it, it became a culture. And so people would would play this game, and then they would like build their own personality on top of the dance, and you pose at the end and do different things. So that's when I was originally introduced to it. I had gone back to West Virginia and noticed that the people in Japan were much thinner than the people in West Virginia, and I thought, well, maybe it's because they're all playing DDR. So. I started to play DDR at home, so I had bought the game in Japan and imported it back and learned to read Japanese so that I could read the menu system and whatnot. So I've been playing this for a long time, but the, when I really got into it is when I moved to Canada to do a postdoc. And I, has anybody ever been north of Toronto? Well, I, I lived in Edmonton for five years of my life, and it is really cold there. And sometimes it gets down to like minus 40 degrees, which it, that the temperature Celsius and Fahrenheit are the same. Um, so you don't go outside and exercise when it's that cold. So I continued to play DDR and I got really interested in it. But the interesting thing that happened is I worked in a spinal cord injury clinic. And so we were training people on a treadmill to walk uh, and using the feedback mechanism of the, the band moving as they walked on it to initiate hip flexion uh, in, in the spinal cord injury patients. And one of the things that I always thought was, well, that looks awfully boring. It definitely helps them. But over time, they plateau in their, their ability to, to um, initiate better movements. And so we sort of devised the idea that, ah, you know, I bet you this game that I'm playing that uh, in, has you initiate movements in all directions and has a game element that also tells you you're getting better over time would be a perfect tool for rehabilitation. And so uh, my visa expired, and I left Canada and moved to the United States and decided to continue this work uh, at the Adams Center. And rather than do spinal cord injured subjects, because that's you, you need real kind of IRB approval and, and specialty to be able to do that kind of research, we continued this, this thought uh, process in a group of uh, Parkinson's subjects. And I'm going to present to you some of that data here. But along these lines, um, I'm also a neuroscientist, and so my interest in this is to understand how does this game actually get us to be able to use our brain to learn how to do the motions in the game. It, it, ever, I, I assume most of you have actually played DDR. Can anybody play it beyond the light level? Can anybody play it on the expert level? Couple, right? So I want to know how you go from light to heavy, or you know. So I, I want to what goes on in your brain to be able to pick out the beat to initiate the movements. So we wrote a grant. Um, uh, from the uh, Health Games Research from Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, and they uh, provided us the money to scan people's brains uh, while uh, playing DDR in a functional magnetic resonance imaging scan. And so I continue this work in Japan using a functional near-infrared spectrophotometer. Some of this work has been published. Um, you can look us up. Uh, it's uh, in uh, Neuroscience Letters, the work with the near-infrared spectrophotometer. We, we continue to do that research, and. Uh, the, some of the papers have been submitted on the MRI stuff, so we hope that they'll be published very soon. Uh, but what I want to show you is, in order to understand the Parkinsonian brain, we also need to understand the young, healthy brain, uh, so that we know what the difference is, because we don't actually understand Parkinson's disease very well. So we also scanned a bunch of young, healthy people, and the really interesting thing that happened is we saw many of them losing weight while they're playing the game. And so it started to, I put two and two together and thought, wait a minute, if college freshmen would really get a benefit from playing this um, because you know you gain the freshman 15, which in reality is more like the freshman seven, but still that's seven pounds on average that people gain when they go to college. And we think one of the things is it's because they don't exercise anymore. You're required to exercise through high school. And when you go to college, there's no requirement to have physical education in your life. Right, so what we want to do is we want to continue this and, and see how, if we know what DDR is doing in our brain and it's causing us, our cognitive abilities to, to increase, um, wouldn't that also translate to your schoolwork if you were required to play DDR in the classroom? 
Um, so we don't know that. We want to look into that, and we want to continue the scanning work, and we want to uh, you know, look at the long-term playing of college students uh, with this, as well as, as younger students. But let me show you some of the stuff here um, that we, we are doing. And let me turn the volume down, because that was really loud just a minute ago. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, this is the kind of stuff that we are doing. So I built my own multiplayer DDR system, which is uh, built on Stepmania, uh, but I always tell my players you're playing DDR, right? So I want them to know that this is a real game. It's not something that I built or anything. It's just that we needed the multiplayers just because of the time on task. We wanted to train a bunch of people at the same time. And so this is this is just an open source clone of DDR. It's, uh, I actually use the DDR Max 2 skin on top of this so it looks like you're playing DDR. Um, but what you can see is we have multiplayers at the same time. And um, we found some interesting things, but let me play the video for you so you can actually see. So this is this is what playing the ER at the heavy level looks like. And you can see that two of the subjects here are wearing something on them. Those are portable metabolic masks. And so uh, I'm gonna show you a little bit of data in a second, but just I mean this is this is an easy song, like with 10 hours of training at the game, 10 hours. That's like one day a week for, you know, a couple of weeks, or you can play, you know, every day for a week and figure out how to do this. And every kid in the, who's able-bodied can do this, trust me. We get 70-year-old Parkinson subjects to be able to do this, and I'm gonna show you a video of that. Um, so anyway, uh, you can see that we became pretty efficient at the game. Um, and this just goes on and on and on. But uh, what, what we also found when we asked the players who had gone through this training program, specific questions. Um, and one of the things that we found was that they really liked playing the game in a group as opposed to by themselves. And that encouraged them to kind of play harder and not only try to beat their own score and, and look at their energy expenditure, but they're also, what's this guy doing? Am I, am I as good as him? Am I as good as her? And that, Funny thing is, is that also works for the Parkinson subjects. It's really fun to watch them sort of see, oh, look, I'm getting better, but this one's not. And what am I doing wrong? It, it, it really, it, it's, it was a lot of fun to do these kind of things and to see how the group dynamic really helps the game. And, and so um, they, they really like the competitive aspect of this, as well as the, the working together to support each other, but, but they like the fact that they were competing against themselves and competing against their friends, right? And so that even if you weren't as good as your friends, you can see you're getting better over time. And that, that ability there is really why we think this is a, a really good game. Um, and, uh, so now, this is something else that we've been doing. So it, I, I was talking about the things that we want to do in, term, in terms of uh, having kids or college students exercise. So we thought, well, there's a whole bunch of these active games right now, and they're being pushed like crazy. Play this, play that. You're, you know, you're going to do all this exercise. So we measured wearing these metabolic masks. A whole bunch of games. These are these are some of the main ones that we looked at. And you'll see that even though DDR has been around for a long, long time, all the new stuff doesn't it doesn't compare. And there's and we have another talk that, that we're going to talk about some of the specifics of what what we think is going on here. But uh, I mean, I'm not going to get into that. What what we think is because I'll let my my students take care of that. But just notice that DDR, even though it's the oldest of the games, is capable of expending the most energy. And I think that that's, if we're going to have a game that's going to be used for exercise, we might as well pick the one that, that has the, the best ability um, to, to burn calories. Now, so this is something I want to show you. Like, DDR is not just for college students, and it's not just for elementary school students. We think you could put this in retirement homes or rehab clinics and get groups to work out together. And, and so that you can reduce risk of falling in the elderly by having them play together and do these kind of things. But this is two Parkinson subjects. I just want you to see, now, the, the subject on the left, she's wearing the metabolic mask, and I'm gonna show you her data. But she, she's between a home and yard two and three level Parkinson subject, and she has severe dyskinesias. But notice how smooth she plays the game. And this is after her training. So she, she practiced and she got good at it. But you can see how she has to hold on to stop the dyskinesias. But now, I'm going to let this go so you can watch this, but the thing I want you to see at the very end is her spool.
So she looks down because she, she thinks that she's stepping in the wrong spot. She can then go back up to the screen and track the arrows that fast. She's 70, 71 or, 70 or 71 years old. And the subject on the right is also 70 years old. And he's got a little bit different type of Parkinson's disease. He's got a freezing type. And so while he's not as good as her, you'll see his score, I think. But I'll let the score speak for themselves. Okay, so. Um, uh oh. <laughs> not double A this time, huh? So I always encourage them from the back. Okay, so now. What you can see here is oh, she got a C and missed uh, <laughs> Very good. zero. Now, so can you do so, I, I think that there's a lot of encouragement there uh, for uh, people to see how easily you can pick up this game. This is just her raw data from what we were recording. And you can see that she's actually on average, so it goes up and down because I had her play 18 songs in a row and each song is two to three minutes. So she can keep this up on a regular basis. But on average, I'd say she's between burning six and seven minutes. Um, and that's pretty good considering she's got Parkinson's disease. And now uh, Konami graciously gave her a copy of the game and she loves it and continues to play it at home every day. And so uh, that's great. Uh, and so that's, that's really what I wanted to talk about. Uh, this is a, just the, the unveiling of the new product and I'm gonna let Lisa uh, take care of this.
Um, I had already mentioned this design specifically for PE teachers. Within that, what we've done is they've asked me to help create their curriculum. So what I've done is I've put together um, a curriculum that, number one, makes sure the teachers understand how to use it um, by developmentally appropriate practices um, based on the national standards of NASPE, our, our national organization for physical education. Um, also within the curriculum, we focus on mainly dance and fitness at this point. So there are lesson plan ideas provided for all grade levels to where teachers can get an idea of how to use the, this particular product in an appropriate manner uh, based on content for fitness and for dance. As well as we've included um, a lot of challenge ideas, competition to where they can really get kids excited, they can get schools involved, they can compete and, and really get kids more you know, motivated to be active before and after school, maybe during recess, um, to come in and start practicing being more voluntarily physically active. Um, there's a smart card that's used. And basically the smart card, every student will have a smart card, every participant will have a smart card. And the smart card will be registered basically to them. So each time they come to play, it doesn't matter what pad they're on, they put their card into the pad, and then it begins tracking, not necessarily the card, but their information is being tracked. So there's an assessment feature to it. So anytime if I got off pad six and I went over to pad eight, I just take my card and I stick it in, and then it continues, I get to continue to keep up with my data, and the teachers can do that as well. That is rare for um, active gaming products right now. I think it's a huge feature, especially for teachers. Right now, at the end of the year, teachers are, are wanting to, to print out all kind of assessments that they have on their students, end of year reports, fitness gram information, present challenge information, and with this, they can keep track of all of their students' steps, um, how if any BMI has changed because you're able to put in height and weight and keep each student's BMI information, um, calorie expenditure, so they have all of this data they can submit with their final reports. Um, something else we'll talk about as well, which uh, the, the songs that they are using, and I know this was a little bit of a point of contention with uh, the regular version of, of Dance Dance Revolution, Revolution was the appropriateness of the song. So what um, Konami's done now is they've, they've understood that, and since they're developing it for physical education, they've put together a committee that reviews every single song. And they've partnered with Sony to where now they're gonna continue to have a song base, but every single song is going to be reviewed and approved before it's being used with the system. Um, another interesting feature that you'll get to see a little bit about is the community website. And so what they've also done now is they said, hey, we've got social networking going wild. Everyone wants a social community when they've done that. So they're going to have a website to where parents can go into it, teachers can go into it, students can go into it. They can talk with each other. They can you know, bounce ideas back and forth with each other. They have this whole social community which also is where the teachers can go in and download the data. They can see the reports of those things. Okay, so a little bit about the, the, the packages that they have. Um, like I had mentioned before, it's up to 48 dance pass. Um, it's based on a, a PC software system. Um, the, the card is, is outstanding actually because one thing with the pass that they developed is they're light. And so I know the pads that I've used in the past, the, the harder pads that are durable, it's, they're really difficult to move around. They, they really are. And so students that I, we like to teach our teachers, how do students help you clean up? Well, with this they can. It's, it's pretty simple. They can grab it with, with one hand and pick it up and put it back in the car or pull it out and put it into place. So that's a, a very good feature that saves time in the classroom, which we're all trying to do. Um, they also are wireless. They charge on the car. So you don't have to worry about it during the day. You stick them back on the cart and they charge and overnight you're ready to go for the next day or the next lesson. Um, the cart is movable, so if you can, just roll it in and out, easy storage. And everything's located in the cart. So the monitor the teacher needs to access or to plug in information or to look at information um, is located right there. Uh, within the system, which is really neat also, is if I have six classes a day, I can have a playlist or a roster made for my class. So I have Miss Janie's class, but I have all my students' names right in there. The, the next class, the next class, I can click on that, and I, ha I can have playlists. I can let my kids pick the playlists. What's your top 10 songs? Here's my playlist for this class. So it can be individualized. Okay. Um, the lesson plans I talked to a little bit. Um, I think the, the interesting thing about the lesson plans are they're, they're ideas. So I, I didn't give uh, a unit.
unit plan for each one. I gave them ideas to where you could really look at, even though you know I might be teaching sixth grade, I can look at a, a fourth grade lesson and say, hey, there's some ideas that I can I can bounce off of. So I think there's going to be about 18 lessons altogether, but there's going to be 18 ideas that you can go in any direction with that curriculum. Um, a one-year warranty is for the system, but there's extended warranty available. Uh, the smart cards come, there's 250 that come with each system, but then there's uh, with the base system, and then there's 500 with, uh, with the other systems. And then the, the, the sustainability part that I like also, because they're working with Sony, they can continue to update their music. And this is something that's been tough with the, the regular systems or other systems out there because they, the students get such, you know, sing the same songs. Every generation is different. The genre of music changes. There's different genre of genres of music that they're using, so they continue to update those to keep the kids' attention. Okay, here's briefly the the website idea. Okay, you see up at the front, the teachers, parents, students have all different login areas where they go to their own secret home and can communicate. Um, and then uh, there's a quick one up there at the top left that kind of shows it's a pretty three-step process for the, the teachers to jump in and, and get logged into and get going and provide goals and challenges for their students. And then there's a picture at the bottom that gives an example of the data, what the data would look like printed out from their students. Okay, the difference in, in this edition compared to regular DVR and then the other multiplayer systems available, um, of course, number one, um, it's made specifically for physical education, which we talk about. Um, the cost effectiveness of it for a multiplayer DDR system is, is there. It's, uh, and Claire can talk more about that if you want specifics, but um, they've done a tremendous job of, of keeping costs down to make it affordable for physical education teachers and other facilities to purchase. Um, user friendly, as I talked about with the player, the roster and uh, the, um, the playlists for the teachers. Um, it obviously maximizes student participation. There's not many classes around that are going to have more than you know 50 kids in one class. We hope um, it records personal data for enhanced assessment, which is huge for physical education teachers right now. It's also big if you're wanting to um, submit data for grants. Um, the sustainability with I, the the capability of not just downloading new music, but also being able to update um, the games that uh, Konami can continue to produce. Um, the website, to have that social platform, I think is just huge. It's where we're at today, and to have that availability um, to communicate within that social network is, is also a bonus. And then um, fundraisers and tournaments. Uh, we've done so many little things with DDR already just with the two pads that to be able to get classes together and uh, raise money for your school to put back into to physical education, to purchase other pieces of equipment, to let the kids, you know, get prizes and rewards. Is, you know, there's there's so many ideas, and some of those will be included into the curriculum. And I know I'm running out of time here. Um, I'll just barely go over this because there's other sessions that talk about um, grants and funding, uh, but there are available grants on all levels um, that that are available. She put up there um, the keyword being innovative. Typing in keywords to find grants and using such things as technology, physical activity, childhood obesity, and innovation um, is huge in helping find those grants and locate them. And then fundraisers with the PTO, uh, your, you know, the parent organizations of schools and uh, partners in education. So lastly, um, here are some of the, the national partnerships that Konami is already working with. Um, we have the American Diabetes Association, um, NASPI, including the President's Challenge, which is the Physical Education National Organization, and then Let's Move in Schools by, by Avery. And I think we are done. I wanted to mention, too, one important thing about uh, what they've been doing, which shows how, how important it is for them to develop the right product, is they started a pilot um, with schools in California where they're located. I'm not going to try to say the El, El Segundo. El Segundo. Um, and what they've actually done is they've had the, the students and the teachers actually, you know, provide and, and put the games in there, like develop the games to where this is about them and what the kids like and what the teachers like. It's not about what Konami like. It's what, what can we provide that is, is the best thing for the students and the teachers. The pilot's still going on now, but they're taking that feedback and finalizing the project before they release it in the fall. Um, any questions for any of us? Video to play? Do you think it's live? I, I think it will. Do we have time? I don't know. Do Any 
questions the when, worth watching. Yeah, yeah. For any of us. Yeah, we'll take questions while the video. Emily, Clara, myself, or Adam. Any questions? I don't okay. <coughs> So there's actually four levels. There's beginner, intermediate, advanced, and expert. But you can only show three at a time based on the screen size. Okay, and who, like, do you see one student playing on the screen? No, based on the student's level, they can actually pick whichever, like if they're a beginner, intermediate, advanced. So they, pick, so they choose the lane as far as their ability level. So yeah, so at the yeah, so like for me, Divya, what they did is like what you guys did a great job is like an actual judgment at the event. Yeah. So that's there. Yeah, so that's in there, yeah. So a couple things. First thing, um, the team so the so all the students are set to team. So we want team competition, like in, you know, like versus the individual competition. So you'll see um, you know, four teams kind of running and you'll see, you know, who's in first place kind of thing. They'll also, at the end of the song, give you all the stats. We actually have a demo at 12 o'clock in the tent where we'll actually have a middle school, a local middle school here, so you can actually physically see the game, which I think will be a lot of, you know, a lot more helpful, so you can actually see how the game works. So please join us if you can at noon at the tent. It'll be set up. Yeah, and it'll be set up throughout the conference as well. Yes. Quick question for Emily. Hey, Emily, how are you doing? Yeah. Um, West Virginia is known as the model place for DDR and dance games uh, with the implementation into the schools. So what kind of results have you seen? And why, why do you, in your opinion, think it hasn't spread to the other states at the statewide level like West Virginia to try to do? So we had um, West Virginia, I like to say West Virginia is more like, I mean, it's a, it's pretty geographically compact, and you can't go any place in West, I mean, in West Virginia without knowing somebody. Uh, we are a state that really collaborates very well, and so to implement that at a statewide level took multiple partners. So our governor uh, actually supported financially getting these into the schools. Our state um, insurance company, as well as Blue Cross Blue Shield in our state. Um, our, we have a local foundation called the Benetton Foundation that gave a lot of money for us to do this. Our Board of Education was a key partner from the very beginning, and so it was this united effort that got that, and without that partnership, it wouldn't have been able to come to fruition. So, um, and the fact that um, in West Virginia, um, there's not a lot of opportunities for physical activity, so this was seen as a really good thing to, to improve the physical activity environment in our schools. Um, you know, in other cases, that may not be the, be the case.